actually locating and sequencing a gene that is responsible for an inherited trait can teach us a lot about the molecular biology underlying that trait. Even today, when sequencing and genotyping is inexpensive, identifying genes that underlie inherited traits is a long and an arduous process. Almost always, it starts by figuring out where the gene is on a genetic map, which is just a linear order of the genes on the chromosomes and the genetic distances between them. For example, the map of a Drosophila chromosome may show the genes for short aristae and a black body and cinnabar eyes and vestigial wings and brown eyes. And the distance between these genes isn't a physical distance. It's not a number of DNA bases. Instead, it's the frequency of recombination that we observe between these genes, measured in MAP units, or centimorgans, or CM. One centimorgan is a 1% chance that a gamete will be recombined between two markers. And over short distance, this kind of genetic, um, genetic distance is additive. For example, if the distance between, let's say, the black body and the cinnabar eyes gene is 9 centimorgans, and the distance between the cinnabar eyes gene and the vestigial wings gene is 8 centimorgans, then the distance between the black body gene and the vestigial wings gene is just 9 centimorgans plus 8 centimorgans is 17 centimorgans, right? That's pretty straightforward. And remember that recombination between genes happens because of crossing over in meiosis. And over short distances like this, the um, there's only likely to be one crossing over, right? And the observed rate of recombination what we are seeing in gametes is the same as its actual rate, its actual frequency. However, remember that crossing over can happen multiple times on a single chromatid. And as genes get further apart, the probability of seeing a double crossing over rises. And if we're only looking at two genes, we don't see double crossing over because it doesn't result in recombinant gametes. Right? And so if a parent genotype is big A, big B over little a, little b, and one crossing over leads to big A, little b chromatids and little a, big b chromatids, then two crossing overs leads right back to a big A, big B chromatid, and a little a, little b chromatid, right? And so this is why that we say that genetic distance is only additive over short distances, right? Because if you've got a long distance, then there are crossing overs happening that you are missing that you are not seeing because they cross over and then they cross back. Um, but if you've got enough genetic markers and those genetic markers are close enough, you actually can create entire genetic maps of entire chromosomes. And in the process of doing so, determining genetic distance with not just two linked genes, but with three of them is a lot more informative than doing so with just two, because the three genes will tell you not only their relative distances, but also the order between them. And interpreting three-point test crosses is our next subject.